Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mileni. I'll be hosting your webinar today. I'd like to welcome Fabricio Almeida, who will be presenting this session today. Fabricio, feel free to start on everyone. Just a quick um, something to tell. Uh, we will have time for questions in the end of the presentation. So please use the Q&A box in the bottom of the page and use the option sent to everybody, not only to the presenter, please. So Fabricio, welcome. Thank you for joining us and feel free to start whenever you want. Thank you, Milene. Thank everybody for coming virtually, right? So my name is Fabricio and I'm a professor, assistant professor at UNESP and uh, I do some work in partnership with colleagues here in Brazil trying to develop uh, vibroacoustic techniques, which local ones, I mean, which can hide in detection, right? So my main, my main top here would be the cross correlation. So I will try to show uh, this kind of technique in, uh, via different perspectives, how to use this technique, like uh, uh, via different perspectives, right? So my talk, I will talk about NSP because I think is a university which I work for, and uh, perhaps people are curious to know how this looks like here in Brazil, the motivation for this talk, objectives, and a kind of problem overview. So the problem overview here is the leak detection via cross-correlation, and basically is how to estimate two parameters used in this technique, which is the time delay and the leak velocity, right? And give some examples to show uh, what happens with this leak noise in this technique when we have different scenarios like uh, metallic pipes, plastic pipes, different surround medium, uh, just to give you an idea uh, uh, why uh, we've, we've been doing this kind of project in Brazil, this techniques and device. And then I will try to, let's say, introduce you uh, these techniques we, we've been developing, which are the web-based right uh, to simulate leak situations, right? So to help people to understand perhaps uh, these, what happens with uh, the leak signal in correlation. And the virtual test rig, which I named here as VTR, so is a kind of rig, a portable rig, uh, which, which you can be able to reproduce some uh, leak data, simulated ones and actual ones. So it can be used for training people and can be used for, for example, assessing uh, leak noise correlators, right? And I will introduce the Brazilian leak noise correlator, which there is none as far as I know in Brazil. So you, you are not tempted to produce the first one. We are working on this um, prototype at the moment. So I show you the results we, we got and how it works basically, okay. So UNESP is one of the main universities in Brazil and is located in Sao Paulo state, which is here. And uh, Sao Paulo state is more or less the size of the UK, okay. And UNESP is spread out uh, in different cities in Sao Paulo. For example, these circle here are the cities where there are UNESP, UNESP campuses, right? I work here in Tupã, in the city, in the middle of Sao Paulo, and I lecture for undergrads here in Tupã. And Bauru is when I, when I, when I, I have my postgrad students and I lecture for uh, PhDs and MSCs courses, right? And also I work in partnership with uh, a team which set up in Ilha Solteira, which is here in UNESP too. So the, this team is run by Professor Brennan and we have a very good collaboration uh, along these years, right? And I take my measurements, I conduct my measurements uh, in Sao Paulo city. So basically to conduct this project or trying to make this project to move, I need to travel the whole country, the whole uh, state, right? Which is more or less the side of the UK. So this is how my life works in this uh, scenario about leak detection, right? So my motivation is um, Brazil has a really, not really high, but has a high uh, water wastage. Uh, so if you, if you can see here, uh, the average of water wastage in Brazil is about 40%. And if you look at this map of Brazil here, so it's dividing five regions, okay? North, South, and so on is how we divide Brazil. In each region, you have states, 
uh, in these bounds, right? And for example, in north of Brazil, where we have one of the highest uh, water loss, you can find state with water loss of about 70%, it's quite a lot. So one way uh, uh, to try to reduce such losses is via providing uh, device techniques and training locally. So the motivation which we got here, I mean, we, because it's a team, it's not me, but it's a team. So what the way in which we, we, uh, we found this way is trying to make products or enhancing techniques which can be available and feasible uh, here in Brazil for an affordable price because everything is related to cost nowadays. So this is the main motivation for our group, okay? So the ob objectives here is show how correlation works because my whole talk, my devices, techniques are based, are based on correlation. So how it works for the ones who do not know. So I will try to do to talk the basics uh, and, and then introduce this web-based uh, software, right? Because you can simulate different conditions uh, and it can be used to understand correlation and then problem about leak noise traveling in plastic pipes, for example. So there is, uh, it's possible to simulate different conditions, setting up the pipe properties, the pipe geometry, type of sensor use and surround region. Uh, that, so you can use an analytical model to that, which is not easy to implement, but using software, so have an interface can be kind of easy to, to play with, right? And then I introduce as well, a thing we call the virtual test bench, because again, like a training, training and correlator, uh, leak noise correlator assessment are needed if you want to reduce this water loss, right? And introduced the first Brazilian made leak noise correlator. So basically, you tried to use the most of components made in Brazil, uh, which you, which which makes uh, the, uh, the which makes the, the this kind of device to be feasible. You uh, to, to, is feasible to be used uh, here in Brazil locally, right? So that's the main objectives here. So the problem overview, imagine I have uh, this pipe, buried pipe. I, I didn't show the surround medium, but there is a soil be, around the, the medium. It can be air or whatever. I look at the pipe only at the moment. So there is a leak within sensor one and sensor two, right? And this leak, now the, in the leak, then the energy of the leak propagates either side of the leak, right? At the same velocity, let's say. So one, one, one bit of the leak will propagate towards the right, and one bit of the leak, the energy will propagate towards the south, right? In this in these, uh, schematic, uh, the sensor one is closer to the leak, while sensor two is further to the leak. And so in, in this case here, the leak noise will reach first the sensor one, and the leak noise will reach after, you know, will take longer to reach sensor two. And this information can be used to detect the leak position, right? So it's a kind of passive way of detecting the leak. And the only thing we, uh, we know that is known in, in this problem is the distance between the sensors. So that should, it should be a way to use such distance to calculate the leak position uh, according to one of the sensors position, right? So if, if you we arrange the, uh, the average uh, average velocity equation, okay, we can, we're gonna end up with this, uh, this simple equation here, which says that the leak position uh, according to D1, so which is calculated, I calculate as D1 as a reference, is a function of D, as I told you before, D, C, which is the velocity at which the leak propagates along the pipe, and this guy here, which I named called tau peak, which the time delay. So how long it takes for this, like uh, uh, the difference between the arrival time, arrival, arrival times uh, that the leak, the leak signal would take to be collected by the sensors. Okay, so it's given by a technique called time, uh, uh, cross correlation, basically. That's why we, the name we use uh, is used. So like a leak noise correlator, because it used the cross correlation technique basically, okay? So for example, if you have a leak in the middle, there is no, there is no uh, delay between the signals. 
so it'd be zero. So you can see the card, the leak would be exactly in the middle or position within the middle, the middle between the two sensors. Okay. So <laughs> the equation seems to hold. Okay. So the problem is in plastic pipes, you know, the leak is heavily attenuated. So if you are far away from the leak position, the leak signal can be easily contaminated by background noise, which are people talking, passing cars, traffic, planes, planes passing over, and so on. So it can be really corrupted by this kind of noise. Noise due to the water system, which, which, are, which this kind of noise can be pump noise, you know, the noise generated by the water passing through valves, sharp bends, you know, yeah, this, this generates extra noise. And of course, the leak noise. So the leak noise can be embedded in this kind of addition of noise. So if you're going to listen to the leak by, uh, by yourself using one sensor, for example, it can be difficult, it can be hard to, to, to know if there is a leak and, and even, even, even worse to know if the leak position, to estimate the leak position. For example, let's 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 try to measure. Let let's see. Uh, suppose I have the measurement at the leak position, and I can do it if I know where the leak is, or if I use a pipe rig for that, right? So this is a, a time history, or is the the, the severity vibration of the, the, the signal? So where the leak signal is given by the black one, right, and the background noise is the red one. So you can see in this regard, the leak signal is much much bigger you know it has much much energy vibration levels higher vibration levels when compared to the background noise so when if so it means that if you're if you are around the leak uh if you use one sensor only right so it's easy for you to point out or detect the existence of such leak right however if you are far away from the leak for example 30 meters away from the leak in this, in this case you see that the leak signal now reduced severely quite a lot heavily you know so and then and then the background noise and the leak noise looks like the same so if you use one sensor only you'd be very difficult for the user to detect the existence of the leak or its position so that's why I use correlation in a way to try to suppress background noise and bring up you know yeah, like uh, highlight the leak signal this is basically what it is so for this we use this like uh, for for bringing up this kind of stuff and also try to estimate the time delay we use the cross correlation right <laughs> and and this cross correlation is kind of a measure of similarity between the signals uh collected by sensor one and collected by sensor two so you have sensor one sensor two is like sliding them over each other and then you see when they are the the the, the most similar and when they are when they have this, this this higher similarity level is when the time delay appears so a peak appears in the cross correlation function which is exactly this guy here so this way is one way of estimating the time delay between the two sensors, you know, what they feel. But like you can see, this is a very nice cross correlation, very clear peak, but it's only possible because like uh, a filtering was applied prior to calculate these uh, cross correlations. So filtering needs to be used to attenuate any background noise out of the frequency range over which you cannot find leak, good leak data or good leak signal, right? So basically it's like that. So one way to, another way to look at the time delay and also the filtering uh, bandwidth, uh, the data should be um, uh, filtered is via using the cross power spectral density function. It's like, it's, it's roughly speaking, is like getting the cross correlation the, which is in time domain, let's say, and moving this information to the frequency domain, roughly speaking, okay? But when you do this, when you move to the frequency domain, you're going to end up with amplitude and phase. That's what you're going to have in frequency domain. So the amplitude, the first one, which is the modulus of the CPSD, the cross power spectral density, gives you uh, the energy, the, 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 the energy, uh, the leak energy is similar, the leak energy is felt by the two sensors, let's say, along the frequency. So you can see here, if you see the, 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 the CPSD here, you have a region, you have this kind of domed kind of area, which tells you that there are leak 
uh, that there is leak energy within here and can be used to set up the uh, future limits, for example. On the other side here, we have a, a straight line, which is related to the phase between the two sensors. And this phase between the two sensors is related to the time delay as well, which is given by the peak in the cross correlation. So in turn, uh, if you look at the CPSD, you can end up having an estimation of the frequency bandwidth where you can find the leak, uh, leak energy. And of the time delay, if you estimate, if there, if there is a way to estimate the gradient of the, of the phase, okay? So, and also it's possible to see that the, where there is a straight line behavior here, uh, we have a, some energy, you know, between the two, uh, the two signals, the two sensors, right? Which is what you use. So in turn, the timeline information can be estimated in two ways, which can be getting the peak in the cross correlation or estimating the phase gradient. So this kind of estimating a straight line, you can see a straight line uh, throughout the actual data, so basically it's like that. So I'm telling you that because I'm gonna use this, a lot of this information uh, when I when I when I when explaining the techniques we developed. So a little bit about the physics behind, because uh, I, I, this, this kind of motivates me uh, to show why the web uh, <laughs> the web uh, the web software is is interesting. Okay, imagine you have a metallic pipe. Okay, with no with air around the pipe, just the pipe by itself and they leak in between two sensors, for example, okay? So the unique way for the leak, leak energy to propagate along the pipe is via traveling along, along it, along the pipe, okay? So there is, none, there is no other mechanism which would, which would drag out leak energy. So in, in, if you have a situation like that, you, it's possible like a, 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 the leak energy would have a very broad frequency content, really broad, so going to up to kind of high frequencies. And also the speed, at we, uh, the velocity at which the leak noise propagates is quite high. So it's what I show here, down here. So this green area is the frequency content, more or less where the leak energy can be found. And down here is the leak velocity, okay, where we, which propagates uh, along the metal pipe, okay. Let's now replace the metal pipe to a plastic one. Okay, so see the same, the leak vibration or leak energy can only propagate along the pipe, okay? So what happens if the CPSD leak velocity is this, the leak, the, the frequency content over each leak data can be found now is much narrower compared to the metallic one and the wave speed decreases a lot. So that's why it's very important to know uh, we are like which material the pipe is and what is the surrounding medium uh, uh, on the pipe, you know, because this kind of summation needs to be done. And also the frequency bandwidth, which may be used to filter out the data, okay? Because as if you, if you set up a wrong frequency bandwidth, you end up with a wrong time delay estimation. So it's kind of balance. Okay. And then, okay, plastic pipe is what happens. So we increase the attenuation. So the leak will not travel uh, long distance, right? That's the, the main point and can be corrupted by background noise easily. And now get the same plastic pipe, but now adding up around the plastic pipe, a soil, a clay soil is around the medium, but it's clay, it's rigid, okay? When, when, you, when there is a situation like that, the leak energy still propagates along the pipe, but now there is an extra mechanism which drags out energy from the pipe. So it means the energy uh, of the leak now needs to be divided uh, by the soil, you know, the, the bit which go to the soil and the bit which travels along the pipe, right? And then what happens is you have like the frequency content is further, you know, squeezed at low frequency. And in this case, the velocity when compared, the leak, the leak velocity compared to the plastic one increases a bit because the stiffness of this pipe adds up into the stiffness of the 
the pipe wall and, and water, you know, pipe wall in this case, right? So you have an increment in, in, this, in, in this stiffness, so increment in velocity, okay? And finally, if I change the soil, the clay soil by sand soil, as in this case, so we still have the same as, uh, as the clay soil, but in the, say, in the sand soil, you know, it's not that more rigid anymore as the clay one, there is another mechanism which is responsible for dragging out energy from the pipe. So again, so it means now we have more uh, low, low frequency content when compared to the three previous cases. And in this case, the speed, the leak velocity goes down when compared to the clay soil one. So as you can see, you, and you can play, I could, ch I could change sensors, I could change the pipe geometry. I could change uh, the distance between the sensors, and I could play and see what, what happens. So why not provide a kind of a web-based uh, uh, software so I don't need app, I don't need any system, just internet, to the ones who'd like to play a little bit more and listen a little bit more about correlation. So it's exactly what this uh, web-based software is about, to provide a tool which can be used uh, to enhance, uh, to, um, how can I say, to get a better understanding, let's say, uh, for this type of problem. So this software is like, is a kind of ideal case for the leak. So there is no background noise. There is no pipe dynamics. There is just pure delay or pure leak signal. Okay, so it uses a kind of wave model, so it has an analytical solution, and uh, of course we we uh, like uh, we we did we made some assumptions and simplifications, even though it's not easy to implement. I have to say, uh, as a Python-based software, so it's, it's free, has a H, uh, HTML interface and provides us two environments. As I, as I showed you before, where like the frequency bandwidth is important. So there is one environment which kind of has to make the frequency bandwidth over which there is leak noise um, uh, for a certain uh, scenario defined by the user, right? And there is a second environment, uh, which is the cross correlation and phase visualization. So as I talking about correlation and phase, which are the estimate of time delay, we decided to, to as well to provide this in the software, okay? And of course, if you, if you have the model, you can estimate how the leak velocity would be for the ideal case. So I'll give you an estimation what happens with the uh, leak velocity, basically, according to the scenario chosen, right? And this is how the, to be honest, is down here. We're, down here, there is a, a here is the uh, the link where the software is located at. Okay, but I'm not going to click because I don't want to crash my presentation. But if you want, in the in the end of the presentation, I can go with you down down there and then can play a bit. Right? And this is how the software looks like. So basically, uh, these. In these parameters, which are highlighted here in this drawing, are the ones which the user, users need to fill in into these boxes down here, which is the pipe, the pipe diameter, the pipe wall thickness, and the distance between the sensors. And here, uh, the user can define the pipe type, sensor type, and soil type. And then, based on these parameters, the CPSD can be calculated, and then the frequency bandwidth. Uh, for such situation can be then estimated. So it's what it does. So basically the software has the pipe type, which can be PVC, MDP, cast iron pipe and concrete. Sensor type, which can be a hydrophone, geophone, accelerometer ones, which is the ones used in the industry. Soil type, which can be sand, clay and air, to be honest, it should be surrounded medium. I think it would be better, but anyway. Uh, Pipe outer diameter and pipe wall thickness. The user needs to fill in this information, as I told before, and then the distance between the sensors. And then there is a button, compute, and then like uh, the result will appear on, on the screen, right? And for example, here we have a show how it works and how, how can be good to play some cases. Here we have the Brazilian, a, a, a sorry, a graph where it's calculated uh, the CPSD for one leak 
uh, one leak situation we got here in Brazil. And you can see here that the frequency bandwidth, you know, is about 182 Hertz and about 900 Hertz, right? And there is a central frequency where the peak of the cross correlation, uh, the, the cross power speculativeness occurs of about 500 uh, Hertz, okay? And this includes the, exactly this, this uh, setting up these parameters here. And then move to the UK because I did my PhD in the UK and, I, and the test rig there is a bit different than the ones we have in Brazil. And I simulated for the case in the UK. So look how different is the frequency content for the pipe I have in Brazil and for the pipe I have in the UK. So in the UK is much, much more low frequency content because here, the soil that like in the UK, the soil, for example, is a sand soil. The pipe has a uh, bigger diameter than the Brazilian one, for example. And then, and then the sensor distance as well is much higher for the UK than the Brazilian one. And, and in, in here for the UK too, the central, you know, the central, central frequency is about 90 hertz compared to 500 hertz. I think it decreased a lot. So it's one way of trying to estimate this kind of frequency content. So if you go to the field and if you play a bit of the software, and then if you have a correlator, for example, and you get these numbers, you know more or less where you should find leak signals, for example, for such situation. So when you look at the spectrum or coherence or whatever, you can see if you have something in this area, in this region, which may give you an evidence, an evidence of a, 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 the presence of a leak. And of course, and then we have the second one, <laughs> which has the same inputs as previously, right? But here, what is shown is the cross correlation function, right? Cross correlation function and the phase. As I told you before, the cross correlation and the phase give you the time delay estimation. So you can see what happens with the cross correlation and the phase gradient when you move, when, when the leak is moved along the pipe, which can be closer to sensor A, for example, and move over, example, up to sensor B, right? Like this. So this, this, there is an animation you can, like the user can change and you can see how these, these, the leak position can affect uh, uh, the cross correlation position, position, for example. And also another thing which is interesting here is the wave speed estimation. So according to these uh, inputs, uh, the wave speed can also be estimated theoretically for ideal case. Okay, and perhaps you can can ask me, come on, Fabrizio. So how is a model? So how did you set up the parameters using your model? So I use actual data uh, with the ones which I have. And and before I talk in a bit, I invite you if you have some data and, and like to investigate the characteristics of your leak data. And if you if you in, if you don't mind sharing, please send to us, and then you, you see how how good or how bad this model is, and you can make enhancements uh, in this model, so it can provide a more reliable uh, result uh, for everybody because it's a free tool which should be available for everybody really. So this is the test rig which we are building in Brazil. This is one of the, the first test rigs built by experts, and perhaps one of the, the, the Latin America. And this test rig is being developed for simulating ground vibration uh, measurements, okay, simulations, and pipe vibration measurements as well. So it's a test rig which we can do both. So with new technologies regarding the measurements on pipe or on the ground can be done here, okay? okay? And, and, and this, this, uh, this test rig, uh, is available, uh, uh, is supported by Sabespi, uh, the, the main water company in Latin America. Okay. So uh, in this case here, so the, the test rig is located in Brazil, the leak setup, for example, in between two leak signal, two, two sensors, sorry. And of course, there is no surrounding because we are testing ways of simulating the leak. And the PVC type, we use accelerometer as a sensor, and here is the characteristic of the pipe, so the diameter and the wall thickness. So if you get the software to run and compare it to the actual data, it's possible to see that the CPSD, which is in blue, given by the model, follows, you no know, like or, or vice versa, you no, know, the actual data follows quite well this kind of trend, you know, 
this kind of thing. So it's possible to get more or less this frequency content. The phase is flat because the leak is exactly in the middle. So there is no phase gradient because if, you, if the, the sensors are placed exactly either side of the leak at the uh, uh, using the same distance, you know, with the same distance, uh, so we're gonna the, the phase is gonna be flat, right? And here the cross correlation, although you no, know, it fluctuates quite a bit because of the system dynamics and noise. And there is a problem. There is some noise. Uh, the time delay, the peak in the in the cross correlation, gives more or less where where, where where the actual data points out. You know, so it seems that the 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 uh, the model works quite well. Okay. Okay, let's move. So this is for the air case, right? So let's move a bit. Then we move to the another test rig in Brazil, the one located in São Paulo. Okay, and in São Paulo, the surrounding medium is a clay soil. Okay, so the pipe steel PVC has a different uh, geometric characteristics, so it has a, a bigger diameter and, and so. And this case here is set up uh, the leak out of the two sensors, out of the, not in bracket leak, the, the leak is going between the two sensors. And the distance into, between the sensors is 5.5. So if I fill in these into my code, into the web software, uh, like uh, the results would be these ones, which still kind of good one, can you see? So we still have the actual data in red, measuring the field. And the modules of the CPSD in blue, which shows you a good trend. Uh, compared to the real uh, actual leak data, and also the uh, and also the straight line, which is given by the face, the peak in the cross correlation is all right. You have some lobes because, of course, there is the, the, there are dynamics involved in other uh, uh, reflections and so in, in this test rig, which not which is not uh, taken into account in our model, but we can see really well the peak. So even though we have this kind of extra bits in the actual data, the trend is quite good in my view. And then I, I, I have a test rig in the UK, the one which I use for doing my PhD. This one was provided by the company South Staff Water. Uh, and in the UK, the point is uh, the, the, the soil now is sandy and the pipe has a outer diameter bigger than uh, the other ones, right? I think I think there was a mistake in my, my, my soil presentation, the number here, I will check check out. And uh, and what we got is this. So the, the module of the CPSD, as you can see, shows really low frequency content because of the distance, by you no know, surrounding medium characteristics. It still follows a good trend compared to the actual one. And then the phase, you know, the phase is quite good as well. It's a pretty good straight line. And the cross correlation, you know, meets the peak in actual data. So the peak in actual data and the peak uh, of the simulated one, they meet quite well. So I think this is a, a good tool, really. It needs to be, let's say, tweak the bit, you know, depends on, on, on the uh, actual data we, uh, we get, you know, in that library and see how, how far it can go, right? But I think it's a, a interesting to at least to uh, build up your knowledge. Uh, or your, your feelings about this technique, okay? The other one is the virtual test rig. Imagine if I get this model and also if I get this data I, 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 I've shown previously and I gather this information in a kind of box and this box can replicate these signals so you can train in people using correlate or you can train in people uh, or you can assess uh, leak noise correlators because you, you can kind of replicate leak, leak noise situations or leak signals, uh, like leak detection situations, right? So it's exactly uh, what we try to do here, developed by one, one of our MSc students. And basically this device has two bits. One bit is the hardware and one bit is the software. So the hardware, involves uh, actuators, involves signal conditioning, uh, signal, signal acquisition, and so on. And the software is the one that you control the box. So uh, I, uh, yeah, if, if the model is going to be used, if the actual leak data is going to be used, and so on, right? So it's what it does. So the hardware, the box, looks like this. So 
uh, you can see some actuators. So these actuators, it looks like the measurement positions where I place sensor P, uh, sensor one and sensor two, like P1 and P2, right? And inside of the, the box, there are cables and so and so. And also uh, sensors to check uh, the, 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 the result uh, given by the box, you know, given by this virtual test rig. So these results, can be compared to the ones given by the cross correlation for, by the leak noise correlators, for example, and see if they are confined or not, or can be used for training purpose. If it's like a plane, for example, the model I gave you before uh, here to show how it works, right? And then the software is, is more or less dividing this way. I know there are a lot of here, but basically uh, there is a bit of the software which, uh, which uh, can be uh, used to, to, to check if the, the virtual test rig is working fine. And then if you work fine, you can decide which tests uh, will be carried out, will be conducted. So one test is related to the simulation, which we're using the model I've shown previously. And the other one is uh, downloading actual leak data, okay? And to show, to prove how it works, so, I don't want to use the test rig in the UK again, because uh, it's the, one, the test rig which provide me very, a very, let's say not easy, not a very, how can I say, uh, a very good leak data, but, but in, this, in the sense that there are a lot of information there, system dynamics, leak data, uh, reflections and so on. So if I can reproduce such, such signal, it, you know, like a full of uh, components which affect leak noise or in the system, it means I perhaps can can uh, simulate any any data I, I have. So the prob probability of doing of doing this kind of uh, uh, replication, you know, kind of um, simulation is pretty high. So here again, I have the the, the, the UK test rig, but the leaks located within the two sensors. That's the, the difference. So if you see the modules of the CPSD in the phase, you see if you stare the phase, you see the phase not a straight line anymore. If not a straight line anymore, there is a deviation of it. And this deviation is due to the dynamics of the system. There is a resonance in the system which adds up extra uh, phase, you know, this kind of shift in the phase. And also you can see it fluctuates at low frequency. It means it's a kind of, it's a sign of reflections. So if I can reproduce a sign where I have leak, reflect, stronger reflection and strong dynamics using this bench, it, it perhaps can work for other cases, you know, especially the good ones. And this is the cross correlation given by this data. Okay, so this is then the bench uh, being tested. Okay, this has been being tested. So it's the software, which is on the computer. Here's the hardware. And this is a commercial correlator being tested, okay. And this is the result given by the bench. So uh, the, the red line is the actual leak signal, right? the ones which I, 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 I you try to replicate using the um, virtual test rate. And the red one is the, the data from the virtual test rate. And this shaded area, green area here, is the frequency bandwidth over which you find the most of the leak energy. And you can see that within this range, look, it's pretty good. The, the modulus is pretty good, and the phase is, boy, it, it matches really well, it overlays really well, okay? Of course, out of this frequency bandwidth, you have background noise, and the big background noise will be different because uh, I can be speaking that, you know, the environment is different. So you cannot have the same background noise from a measurement and something you are reproducing. Just you have a re really refined control uh, on the environment, right? And then and then you have the correlation, okay? And the correlation meets pretty well. So I find this is a, 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 a good way to reproduce the data, right? And then finally, the Brazilian noise correlator, the, correl the leak noise correlator, sorry. The leak noise correlator is not exactly a new tool, but there is none produced here in Brazil, right? So it means that the cost for a correlator in Brazil is a way lot, right? It's really expensive. And if it's really expensive, like just few companies or 
uh, we, we'll be able to buy it and apply in the field. So we're going to have a lack of correlators uh, usage for non-water, uh, non-revenue water, right? Problems. That's the point. So, and 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 my opinion. So this photo here summarizes pretty well what we're doing. So we have in this box we have this software, the model, and which is the software. We have actual data. One way of checking the correlator, right? And then doing our own device, okay? And for this device, the sensors should have a really good sensitivity in low noise content. Synchronization is really important, okay? Uh, long range transmission, reliable and effective signal processing tools are, are, are welcome, you know? Friendly interface with the user, remember, is a technician which will be out of, out of there without knowing much signal processing. So anything you can add to help them in, in sort out some parameters is, is welcome and low cost. In Brazil, it's expensive. So like they will not buy much of these devices, right? So the synchronization, the, the, I'm gonna show two points here. Synchronization, it, which is given by these two graphs, you can see. This is like a, how the, the signals are, that the sensors are synchronized. They're synchronized using a function in GPS called post per second. So every second there is a post. And this kind of post can be used to turn on the AD or, or the acquisition or, how, or, or when the AD converters will be turned on. Okay, so they need to, as there are two boxes and two sensors collected wirelessly, they need to start at the same time. And this is carried out here using this PPS uh, tool provided by the GPS, right? So you can see this guy here is the PPS between the two sensors, all right? So when, when the AD it starts to, to work. And when we don't, we, when there is no much satellites available, uh, the time delay between, you know, the, 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 the time delay, the switch between the two, the two sensors are not higher, but like uh, has the wrong, like let, let's say it has the worst synchronization. And the worst synchronization we got is something about 122 nanoseconds. It's too small. It won't make any difference when you calculate time delay, so it's okay. But when 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 there are a lot of uh, satellites available, so this is reduced even further to seventeen nanoseconds. So in this case, like the uh, time delay, you know, the switch delay between the two AD is even smaller, but it's in nanoseconds, so it's way good. It's okay. Another way which also reduced the cost of, uh, of our product and which is made in Brazil is the selection of the conditioner and the selection of the sensor. We got a one sensor made in Brazil, which is one fourth of the sensor produced abroad, which, and, and all, also the conditioning, the conditioning, we did our own conditioning, which is a way cheaper than buying a conditioner abroad. So these two bits here, reduce the price of the correlator quite a lot, quite a lot. And then it, 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 so it is affordable now, producing is affordable now, buying such components here in Brazil. So we, we, we carry out these tests, right? And then of course you need, this is the hardware bit, which is expensive, but you need the software, the software bit, which uh, the user has to deal with. So the software, of course, has a GPS, so time, location, synchronization, of course, everyone does. And then automatic selection of the, 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 the frequency bandwidth. So the frequency bandwidth over which the leak signal is contained is selected automatically. Uh, so the range over which the leak, the leak, the leak, a range of the position of the leak is estimated. So the leak is not exactly pinpointed anymore. So it's kind of the leak is detected within a range uh, from the, the measurement positions. And this is quite, I think this is new, this quality index. It shows how good or how bad, an estimation, right? An estimation of how good or how bad the measurement take, uh, the measure, measurement taken take is. Uh, and of course, the liquid velocity estimation, which can be calculated by the theoretical equation, which we I, uh, I mentioned previously, or in C2 as any correlator, right? Any actual correlator, any, any correlator, right? 
So they, they, there is this, this front, the first front, front bit of the correlator is, of course, defining some parameters, distance between the sensors, acquisition length, how long are gonna acquire, you know, the signal and make the acquisition. And of course, the leak velocity, which depends, the guy, the user can define if he wants to calculate analytically or if he wants to measure in situ, okay? And this is this screen is the, I think the thing which the, is the, differs from the other correlators, right? This, this does not show uh, us, this, this, this screen does not show the um, uh, coherence it shows the phase, which is straight line instead. So for us, it's easier to spot a straight line than spot a something embedded in, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the background noise. And here we have the quality index, which is a, sorry because of the Portuguese, because the software is in Portuguese, but basically by the colors you, you can guess. So it means uh, red is bad, uh, yellow, Okay, you can get it. And green, for sure, you have a good signal. So what's a good signal, right? Good signal is a very good peak in the cross correlation, right? Basically, so if you get a case like that, it's okay. Of course, there are more, more, more things behind, okay, to calculate this index, but uh, I will keep simple as it is. And then this guy here, for example, is not a good case. You can see, Lows outside lobes, the peak's not clear, so oh, it's not good. So you can see the colors in the cross correlation. This measurement here is good, but is in yellow, right? So okay, look, be careful, right? Another thing you can see here is that this is the automatic frequency bandwidth over here. And you can see, I don't, I don't know if you can see, but there is a dashed red line over here. The dashed red line over here is exactly the phase gradient estimation. If this dashed uh, red line is not no, it's not exactly uh, overlaying the uh, actual data goes up or goes down, the measurement is totally you know, uh, not 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 useful, right? So uh, it's one way, a visual way of looking at this point. So I have the phase bandwidth, right? I have the phase uh, gradient and frequency bandwidth in this vision, and here you have the leak location we kept. Uh, the cross correlation because of course users are again you see cross correlation and this made the division over which the leak is presented okay so basically uh i you know I, I i covered basic concepts of cross correlation but basically mainly the signal processing uh for time delay estimation and the way in which the leak velocity can be estimated to and, and briefly overview about which parameters affect then the leak noise along the pipe. So it means wake speed, bandwidth, this kind of stuff. And the techniques we've been working here in Brazil, which are the web-based software, this virtual test rig and leak noise correlator. These are the, the, some, so that, the other team which I've been working with uh, since 2009. And here I'd like to uh, register my, my profound gratitude, respect, uh, for Professor Brennan, who has been who, the, the person who I've been working since 2009, and without his help, I wouldn't be here speaking. And the water company Sabespi, because especially Marcelo Miki, Marcelo Miki was the first one in Sabespi who opened the door to listen to our ideas, and he was really supportive. So without his help, we will, I wouldn't be here either. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. And then this is my mail for if someone wants to contact me. Anyway. Thank you, Fabricio, for an excellent presentation. Uh, actually, we don't have many, any questions right now. If uh, anybody wants to say something, just can open the, the camera or say something or just send any questions in the chat. No. Well, for me, for me, Melanie, uh, it was excellent, and I've been doing leak detection now since 1980. Uh, I'm so old school. I'll be honest with you. I need to look at this presentation two or three times now to to understand uh, the new the new approach. So for me, it's exciting, but I'll be honest. I've got no questions because I don't yet understand the process. I'm still I'm still learning. So uh, uh, that's that's why I think we're probably low on questions from, from that side. So over okay. to you. I hope and the website helps you, Stuart. 
<laughs> I, hope so. I, need, I need assistance. This is new and I'm too old school. Miguel Amaral has a question here. Your correlator works for which diameters? Like, a, diameters. like you should have pipes, uh, like the main water pipes, you know, like you have big diameter pipes, the leak noise will be attenuated. So it won't be, uh, won't travel long. So it is for, let's say, for main, main water pipe distributions, the ones we like for what, like, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, housing usage, normal ones, you know? Okay. Uh, another question here, is that a minimum or maximum pressure required? Wow, this, this is, this is everyone where everyone asks uh, this kind of question. To be honest with you, uh, I got uh, pressure is related to how much noise the leak can be done uh, or can be generated. To be honest, for example, have a small leak and small pressure, the sound won't be so strong. So you won't listen to this noise further away from the leak. Won't be good. So it depends, depends how much noise this pressure can be done and how big the leak is. You can have a huge pressure and let's say a huge hole in the pipe. You will see a lot of water going out, but this lot of water won't make much sound, won't make the pipe to vibrate. So you will see, you have a, a, a lot of water, uh, wastage water, but no much noise. However, if you do a small hole, for example, where you don't have too much uh, too much water flow, but you have this sound, you know, vibrating with this kind of thing. Uh, this would be much more easier to be found. So, is is the mechanism? Yeah, but you don't have any numbers for this, like okay, less than ten meters of water column, it won't work, or something like that. You don't have these numbers yet. No, no, I don't have this number. I don't have them in mind. Oh, and I think he has a question here, and it's really important to you to say, are you selling your equipment outside Brazil? So it's a question that I, I, I've asked you before. Is anyone manufacturing these yet, or what's happening now? Can you tell them? We are trying, like, like this is a, a project together with Sabespi. And like our team and Sabespi, we are doing some uh not checking but getting in contact with companies like uh, which produce some device such as listening sticks geophones because they know uh they have the know-how of of building this kind of ruggedized equipment so we are in contact but for a while we're focused on developing uh the hardware which is take longer than we thought because of covid is quite difficult to get electronics and when we get electronics, yeah, we don't have a num the, the number the number of components are not, are not enough, are not enough, you know. But we intend, yes, we intend to to produce this kind of uh, to get partners and produce this device because for the country in Brazil or of Brazil, but in Brazil mainly, because I think the country needs uh, this kind of device to reduce non-revenue water. Okay, that's, that's great. So you are now telling everybody it's not a product right now. You are developing these and uh, it will be a product. It will be. So, it will be a product. Yeah. It will be a product. Okay, so he's thanking for your answers. And we don't have any more questions. Just congratulations, Fabricio. And I'd like to thank you, Fabricio, for your excellent presentation and to share all your, your experience, all your experience with us here. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. Okay. Thank you everybody for joining this webinar and we are closing right now. Bye.